This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Tell me about what you're drinking, Carl. I'm having a, a sweet vanilla cream cold brew, which sounds like it's going to be very calorific, but it's there's only 70 calories in it, so my weight's good. I can afford to have a wee 70 calorie drink. It's very, very nice. Of course, yeah, at Super Featherweight. Um, talk to me about the fight, Tyler McCreary. Don't know too much about him. What can you tell me about him? He's, he's not a bad fighter. He's um, he's a lot taller than me, but that's normal. Um, he's got a good job. He he's very fast with his job. Um, he's not a bad fighter. It might be difficult again to get past that for a while, but he's he's a decent fighter. Decent fighter, but I, I feel like you know what I want to still do in this game. I you know I want to be a world champion, and I should be. I should be beating boys like this and beating them convincingly. Can I say one more thing about him though? I've seen a lot of stuff recently in the press where I think he's kind of suggesting that I've overlooked him. And I think it's a little bit of a comfort blanket for him. Whereas maybe sleeping easier at night, hoping and actually believing that I am I'm looking past him and looking at guys like Jamel Hurrain or Oscar Valdez, but I'm not. I'm fully focused on this guy. And uh, I just want him to know that. that I have not. Every single every single training session I've had has been focused on Taylor McCreary and no one else. What, have you made some comments that might suggest to him that you are overlooking him more? No. What, what happens is you come and do interviews. People talk to you about future fights, and I say which is exactly what I'm going to do later on. Well, I, I I answer the questions, but I don't bring it up. You know, I just answer the questions when people talk about future opponents. So that's uh, I think that's why he's believing that I'm overlooking him, but he's got it wrong. Um, back in Las Vegas, uh, a place you know well. Happy to be back here. Yeah, I, I love Vegas to be honest. Um, I only fought here once before and I lost a fight. It's a good fight, but um, I lost. And um, but I enjoyed my time out here. I was here for four weeks when I was in Vegas the first time. This time it'll be about four weeks from start to finish um, until I leave and go home. So. Um, it's difficult, obviously, leaving the, my wife and kids and stuff behind, and but I, I feel like it's, it's beneficial for me. Like I'm still two weeks I've been here now, and I'm still waking up pretty early in the morning, so not completely over the jet lag like yet. So I need give me another few days, and I'll be completely over that. I think you must be going to sleep early, right? I'm going to sleep earlier, um, waking up very early, which isn't a bad thing. But I'm going to be fighting probably around ten o'clock, so. I'll still need to adjust a little bit. Your highlights uh, against Santa Cruz were actually all over the MGM today. What are they? Very they were only showing the spots where Santa Cruz is doing well. Probably, well the, the, probably the one that he won, all the highlights, oh, I see. Leave out the good bit in, in New York. But um, yeah, that fight, don't know if that fight's ever going to happen again, if I'm being honest. So um, not for the want to try. And I've, you know, I've told him I, I'm happy to take that fight. I'm happy to take it in LA. Um, but it'd be a bit of a shame because I don't think it ever will happen. Yeah, he fights Miguel Flores this Saturday night. I spoke to Josh Warrington about uh, Santa Cruz as well, and Frank Warren says the same thing, that they're just not interested, they don't get back. Is that the same uh, from your case? Has there been any offers put to them? Um, I don't think there's been any official offers, but when I was with Cyclone Promotions at, at the time, I think they knew that I wanted that fight. Uh, I'm talking about Santa Cruz and Al Haven. They knew they wanted the fight, but um, I feel like the first two the first two fights happened back to back. The third fight probably should have happened straight after the the second one, um, but for whatever reason it didn't happen. I, I I just believe it's a shame. You know what I mean? It's like it's a trilogy fight. It could have been. I think our styles clash very well and the first two fights were very good. This could have been, we could have fought four times, you know, it didn't have to stop at three. But I just have a feeling that the third fight will never come. I think for the pair of you, you both achieved so much in the game, but the, the two fights between yourselves really like were kind of the, the mega fights of your career because they were so good. And as you said, the, the styles were generally well. So it's a shame it sounds like that trilogy won't happen. Absolutely. and. Um, yeah, like again, I, I not for the want of trying. I've I've tried. I, they know I'm open to that fight, and they know I have been open to that fight. But um, for whatever reason, they choose to take uh, other routes. 
Another name that I've heard uh, associated with you is Jamal Herring. I think you did a, a media day uh, with Oscar Valdez. We'll come on to him as well. But yeah, someone that you're very keen on fighting. Yeah, um, I think that he's matching my name quite a lot. Um, it's a fight that I'm interested in definitely. It would give me the chance to become a three-weight world champion and, and Ireland's only ever three-weight world champion. I feel like it's a weight. Not that I'm not... I can make featherweight. You know, I can do it not comfortably but I can make it no one's really comfortable at the weight but um, I feel like I'd be much more comfortable as a super featherweight um, stronger um, and it may suit me more um, but the hurrying fight definitely interests me we could do it in, on the east coast I would have a lot of fans there obviously he's from New York he would have a lot of fans himself I think it would be a, both top ranked fight. it's an easy fight to make I think it could be it could be done he seems interested and I'm definitely very interested how was the uh, day with Oscar Valdez? Very nice. Um, first time I met Oscar, uh, and a real nice guy. Um, I thought he was bigger, you know. Um, although he's a little bit taller than me, but not, you know, a big chunky guy. But I thought he was. I thought he had a bit of a bigger in, in in the flesh. But um, he's a nice guy and a, and a quality fighter and someone who I like to watch fighting. Like I'm, he's an exciting style. I think a lot, you know boxing fans across the world love his style. Um, you can see that he's trying to do new things with the Renosos and he's trying to be a little bit more defensive. But um, yeah, he's a he's a he's a quality fighter. So again, not looking past Tyler, and you've made that clear because he thinks you are looking past him. But it seems like next year there's two top ranked fighters out there, in Oscar and Jamel, which are going to be the likely options for you. I think so. Um, yeah, look, I, what I want this fight's at a catch weight of 128, so it gives it gives me the option of going to 130. Are going to 126, and I just want to fight a champion in my in my next fight. So whether that's a 126 or 130 pounds, it, it doesn't matter. But the hurrying fight's very appealing to me. But if I can't fight a champion, I think the next best thing would be an Oscar Valdez fight because it would still be a, a huge fight. Now, all your fans across the world will want to know the answer to this question. Are you staying away from big obstacles and big objects? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in a house at the minute. I haven't moved in the hotel. Everyone's talking about that and. Um, there's no way anything like that could happen again, could it? So, um, I mean, your luck, though. Uh, like it hasn't been a great year in terms of luck for me, but it has to change at some point, and I feel like it's coming on the on the 30th of November. Right? Did you see uh, your good mate Chris Lloyd get pranked about the uh, commentary for, before in the way Darren Barker said that he wouldn't be on it. What did you make of it? I, no, I thought it was. Uh, he, he actually sent me it, so Chris did. Um, I thought of, I kind of knew a little bit about the background and stuff, so it was probably funnier for me than anyone else just watching in. So it was it was funny. Yeah, he took it and he he took it well. Chris is a great guy, but it was a, it was a good one. Like the the pull the, the pull the wheel over his eyes, definitely. Been doing that podcast with him for quite a while now. Is that something? you want to continue with or do you want to just work in boxing simply once you're done with your career um i think so look it's it was offered to me and you know i when when we had the discussions i wanted to make it clear that i'm still a boxer i'm first and foremost that is my job and this was a good thing to keep me kind of busy in between camps and stuff so the people at joe they know that um the people at 32 red who sponsored the show they knew that as well and but i enjoy it like it's it's really enjoyable we get some of the top boxers across the UK and across the world um, top characters coming on and to be honest I don't really have to do a lot like Chris Lloyd is brilliant and he's, he's a very good pundit he knows the game he does all the research and I just I just butt in every now and again so it's like it's the easiest job in the world for me and but I do really enjoy it to be fair you made a very good point before the Inoue Denaire fight I think Majority of the boxing world for anyway was just going and blitz him. People laughed at me when I said Denner had a chance, and I genuinely believed that. And although he lost the fight, it was competitive and it was a very good fight. And I don't think people give Denner the respect that he deserved. And, and my my rationale behind it was, I know Denner is older, but I've been in the ring with him and I felt his punching power. And he can definitely punch. I saw him at 118 where he looked more dangerous. He's fighting a guy in Anui who's just coming up into that division. He's like, Denner has fought big men and taken big men out before. I just thought like, whoever lands in this fight, it could be lights out. And it wasn't the B, it went the distance. Um, but 
I, I knew it was going to be a very competitive fight, and people kind of laughed at me when I when I said that. But I I, I was I probably said it with a little bit of bass because me and Nito are, are friends now. But I was I was 100 percent serious. Now I know Inoue was going up in weight, etc. But he is considered top five, I'd say, by a lot, if not definitely top ten by all pound for pound. Um, and you kind of outclassed in there really so does that make your win much better now looking back at it well yeah potentially but look different you know different fighters and different fights it's I think that people have said that and have suggested that it makes my winning against the a little bit better even when I fought the at the time people had said he's over the hill he's finished blah 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 but then he's went and put in this performance against Anui and got to the final of the super series um, without sounding disrespectful to Nito. He did hurt me in the 11th round, but I felt comfortable in that fight. But he's, Nito isn't a 126 guy. Like he's, he's suited to 118. He's very, very dangerous for anyone at 118 pounds. Um, I was just a, a bigger man on the night, but it was a, it was a comfortable night for me. Carl, quickly want to get your thoughts on a potential situation where we could see Kid Galahad become mandatory for the IBF title, for Josh Warren's title again. Uh, I think he's got to eliminate uh, within 70 more days. If wins that, he will be mandatory for the IBF belt. Do you think that's correct? Do you think? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I don't know, really. It's, it's nothing really to do with me. That's the IBF ruling. It's, uh, him and Kid Galahad and Josh Warren was a pretty comp- competitive fight. If I was Josh Warren, I wouldn't want to go anywhere near that fight. If I was Frank Warren, I would say exactly the same. It was a bit of a damp squib. I give it to Warrington. I know a lot of people had Galahad win it, but I actually give the fight to Josh. But I think that I think that if I was him, I would look elsewhere and, and try and you know get in the in their position where I can fight for unification fights and just have bigger fights. Um, I think people would rather see me and Warrington again rather than me, uh, Warrington and Kid Galahad. So, but look, it is what it is. If he gets into that position, if Kid Galahad gets into a position where he's mandatory and Warrington's forced to fight him, he's going to have to fight him or, or vacate. Well, God willing, you get your title shots with either Jamal or Oscar Valdez. But if they don't come off, I'm sure third on the list is that Josh Warrington rematch in the UK. That would be a huge fight. And look, I'm not going to start talking about. Warrington beat me convincingly. Um, I've had two defeats in my career, one to Santa Cruz and one to Warrington, and Warrington's um, win was a lot more convincing than Leo's. So um, I don't want to be like, you know, calling Josh Warrington out. He won the fight for Aaron Square. I need to get myself in the position, win another couple of fights before I start mentioning that. But I do believe, still in my heart of hearts, if I change things and box differently and go into the fight, with a different mindset, knowing that he can hurt me, I can, I can, I can win that fight. Like I genuinely believe that. But Josh is a nice guy. I like his team. I like him. I wish him well. I hope that he does get a unification fight because he, he deserves it. Okay, now Carl, you don't have to speak about this, but a few weeks ago we did see that thing on Twitter with you and George Groves. Do you want to make a comment on on the situation? There was a reason why, I, and if you watch it, I didn't really say that he was a quitter. Do I think George Groves is a quitter? No, I don't. But I was digging him out, and I feel like it was right to dig him out. Um, there was a reason why I done it, but I'm going to explain that on my next podcast. So tune in. But um, you know, I got a little bit of stick for the comments that I made, but there was there was absolute reason, and I and I feel absolutely justified in why I wanted to dig him out. He's annoyed me a little bit, the things he's done and said. And uh, I'll, I'll let people know what happened, really. Um, so, yeah. Just the last one on that. What did you make of his response on Twitter? His response? Um, well, he, threw, he, spot the, he spot the dummy out, didn't he? Yeah, it, was a bit, it was a bit mad. Um, yeah, a bit mad. He said, he said it was jealous. I'm not jealous. You know, I, don't, I don't have a lot to be jealous of George about. Someone said the other day, maybe his height, fair point. But apart from that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything to be jealous about George Groves. It was just a bit of a, it was like a bit, bit of a childish reaction, I thought. But look, it obviously angered him. It is what it is. Um, you know, he, he vented on social media that 
no big deal. Okay, on a slightly more positive note, we have Akib Fiaz over there, uh, someone I'm sure you've done many rounds with. Jamie sings his praises. How good is he? Quality, quality fighter, um, and improving all the time. We got him in as a 19 year old kid um, for in preparation for the Warrington fight, and, and I knew then that he could be a like he was going to be a very good pro. Um, he's only 20 years old, and he's you know he's given me very, very good work. He's done some sparring with Stephen Fulton as well, IBO World Champion, who's highly ranked with the other organisations. Um, and it was a quality spar like you would pay to watch. So um, he's very good. He's got his head screwed on as well for a young kid. So he knows what he's doing. I think he'll go very far in this sport. All right, Carl Frampton, thank you very much for your time uh, here in Las Vegas. Wish you the best of luck uh, ahead of your clash coming up. And uh, is there anything you want to add? What's that? Anything you want to add, Carl? Uh, every, I don't know what to say with this part. Coogan always says, is there anything else you want to say? I don't know what to say. So Message to your fans. Uh, uh, thanks for all the support, as always.